Hello everyone and in today's video we shall discuss about unsupervised machine learning and we shall see two um, algorithms which deal with unsupervised machine learning or clustering and dimensionality reduction and uh, we'll explore the algorithms also and its application in this video. So and this is me Priyanka so let's start. So what is an unsupervised machine learning? Unsupervised, that means it has not been supervised and we are working with an unlabeled data set. That means we do not know to which category does the data belong. For example, we have this image and we've got ducks, we've got mouse, we've got bunny. And this we don't know that uh, which, which, who's a mouse, who's a duck and where's the bunny. So we just pass this through an algorithm which will train this data and will, you know, group them into separate classes. So when you, how do you do it? So we do it with through two clustering algorithms, two algorithms basically. First is clustering and the second is dimensionality reduction. So this machine learning algorithm, this uses method, either clustering or dimensionality reduction, some association rule to predict the output. And it does it through clustering or reducing the dimensions so let's see it further what is clustering now see you look at this this picture this image then pre-clustering you have a well mixture of different objects which you don't know what are they and since you know because you've been trained you learn it you know um, through some elder or a teacher or parents that this is a, this is orange or this is a this is a circle this is a square this is a triangle we've been also being taught now we want to teach machines how do we do it we do it through an algorithm and this in this we are using clustering algorithm what it does it it clusters the similar data into a one cluster and so it makes three similar three clusters of similar data so this is what clustering it and it it is easy to identify data for that matter and the clustering algorithms this help our machine to learn from the data and there are various uh, now coming to various uh, clustering algorithms how how they are like k-means k-median hierarchical clustering expectation maximization so these are the algorithms which we'll see in detail in the later videos and how do they really work and help us in clustering the data what maths goes behind them the advantages and disadvantages and so on so now let us uh, go to the real world examples of clustering algorithm or applications where i can use this algorithm in document analysis suppose i want to cluster the data into hate speech or i want to cluster it into sports or some some um, some different category i use for this document analysis i use it for identifying the fake news in social media i want to identify the fake news which is the real news which is a fake news so i can identify that okay in city planning i will use this algorithm in city planning now this is wide because i suppose i want to uh, make wise use of the land so the land can be degraded based land or could be land for reclamation could be a, a i could say a, a land for agriculture so how do you use it what acres what hectares and and um, how much is available how much is not available this is how you can come at come up with a crucial decision now uh, and help the administration with that so you can use the clustering algorithm in city management traffic management etc then you've got marketing and sales also now for business this is also important when you wherein you want to target your customers you want to increase your revenues you want to market new products and launch them and you know targeting the customers for that matter so these are the real world examples of clustering algorithms now let's move on to the second algorithm which is dimensionality reduction now uh, that simply means reduction that means it is reducing something what is it reducing it is reducing certain features or parameters in my data which are not useful right so it, it just extracts the important features and this reduces the number of random variables in a data set, making it very easy to learn because when you don't have irrelevant things, you will learn only the important ones. So that is what it does. 
suppose you also just suppose it with your uh, ex just uh, understand it with your own example if you have got only few things and you don't have unimportant things at your disposal you are quick it's easy to understand and you learn better so that is what this uh, principle goes behind this dimensionality reduction i've got various data i've got immense features what i do is i reduce reduce it and i use only the important one and i train my algorithm on that right and i make predictions then so what i do is i extract only the important features through dimensionality reduction and filter the irrelevant ones now uh, how do i do this so there are various uh, algorithms which help us achieve this task first is linear discriminant analysis this really gives very good result when you apply it and we shall see this and principal component analysis is another um, important algorithm for dimensionality reduction you've got multi-dimensional scaling partial least square regression now this one principal component regression is also one of the algorithm for regression problems and this linear discriminant analysis has various, uh, uh, you know, um, algorithms like mixture discriminant analysis, quadratic discriminant analysis, and flexible discriminant analysis. So this has various, uh, um, it has improved also. And depending on the data set, we can apply the other, other uh, uh, dimensionality analysis. So now, where can we apply this dimensionality reduction application? Examples of it. It can be used in text mining. Okay, suppose you've got huge, huge collection of GVs and TBs of terabytes of data. How do you mine it and how do you get the useful information from that data through this dimensionality reduction algorithm? Handwritten digital recognition, if you want to do, you do it through DR dimensionality reduction, face recognition, image retrieval, intrusion detection big data visualization protein classification in biology in in um, uh, in various fields medicine fields this has been very useful algorithm so um, that's it for this video i hope it was useful and we shall see in the next video the clustering algorithm in further details so till then stay tuned and thanks for watching